Hey, hey everybody, Jason here and I'm back. Today I've got a short video on how to fix a broken transponder. Now this is an old style one and these ones were a little bit easier to get out of the case because you could pretty much just pry it apart. But I ended up having a transponder go bad when you'd flex the wires, sometimes it would count, sometimes it wouldn't. I contacted my laps and they said, look, sorry, it's out of warranty, there's nothing we can do for you. They couldn't even repair it. It was just pretty much like throw it away and buy a new one and I was pretty bummed. Well, my little buddy Riley that I club race with I was kind of griping about it. He's like, dude, you can totally fix that. And so this is the transponder, the type of transponder that I'm talking about. You can see it's the much smaller size or the newer ones. I believe they're called RC3s at this point. And so anyways, long story short, Riley told me that I can cut it open and resolder everything and get it going. I later found out that there are some guys here like Notch and some of these guys down in Southern California that are already modifying these and getting them open a little bit differently. But either way, let me just show you how I fix the transponder and how you guys can fix it pretty easily, probably in 15 to 20 minutes all by yourself. So let's go. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is take a razor knife and start to cut down the edges of the transponder so that you can get it out of the case. This is gonna take a little bit of time and you can see that I'm working the transponder on one side and then I'll flip it to the other side and then the other side and basically I'm just carefully taking a knife, cutting away from myself. Please be careful when you're doing this because it would be really easy to slip and cut yourself. But I'm taking the knife, I'm cutting you know, just a little bit at a time to get the case open. And then I use the middle of the knife and actually pry the case open and I break the transponder out of its case. So once you've got the transponder out of its case, then what I did, I just went ahead and cut the transponder wires right off with some snips. And I grabbed a Dremel with a wire wheel and I just started using the Dremel with the wire wheel to burn off the epoxy until I got down to the wires. I was basically going across the wire side to side, but once I got down to the actual case, I just went ahead and went along the wire until I got down to the metal. And then you could actually see the solder at the end of the wire. I grabbed my iron, desoldered everything, stripped back some fresh wire, and I went ahead and soldered it on. Then you can see what I did. I've seen guys plasti dip these, which is probably an even better way than I did it, but I just took a couple of big pieces of heat shrink, punched some holes in them, and then heat shrunk two different layers onto the actual transponder itself. That way when I plug it in, I can still see it blink. However, after giving this some thought, probably later on this week, I'll cut the shrink wrap off and print my own, I'll 3D print my own little case. So just to make it a little bit cleaner. Anyways, 15 or 20 minutes later, I, had, I saved myself hundred bucks and I had a transponder that worked and you guys can do exactly the same thing. I mean, if the thing's damaged and out of warranty and they're not gonna help you out, you really have nothing to lose anyways. And I'm pretty sure that Someone with average technical skills could get this thing working in no time. So hope you guys enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Hey, by the way, before you leave, I just want to say thanks again for watching my videos. I only make these videos so that we can have fun together. By the way, you'd be doing me a big favor if you could either comment, like, or even better, subscribe to my channel. Again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.